Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to get the game Lethal Company working on the Apple Silicon and Mac. So unfortunately, there is no Mac version of this game. However, we can run the Windows version of the game through something called Crossover. And this is going to allow you to use a translation layer called Game Porting Toolkit and D3D Metal. And it's going to let you play this game locally on a Mac. So I'm going to show you the entire process of how to do this, including how to download the latest version of Crossover, how to install Steam, and how to get the Windows version of this game running, and how to play online as well. All of that's going to work correctly on the Mac. So the first thing I'm going to do is to click on the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you click the link and make a purchase, then I'll make a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, we'll be taken to the store page or you can go to codeweavers.com and click on buy now. I do recommend making a purchase of Crossover Plus, which comes with 12 month support. If you want to get a discount, then make sure to use the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New and just apply here. And then you're going to get a 20% discount. Discount. And right now you can get a 23% discount if you use the coupon code GAMEMODE3. This is valid until October the 17th. And anyway, once already, you can click the buy now button and then you can go ahead and fill out your details. Alternatively, if you want to try this out, you can also go to the Code Weavers website, click the try now button, then you can fill out these details and get a fully featured 14 day free trial. So that's what we're going to do today. Here we're downloading Crossover 23.5, which is the latest at the time of recording. So once Crossover is downloaded, we're going to go to Finder and then we're going to go to our downloads folder. We want to find our Crossover crossover zip file here. So all we need to do is double click. It's going to extract. And then we have the crossover app here. We're going to drag and drop this and put this into our applications folder. Once that's copied over, we'll click on applications and then we're going to scroll until we find the crossover app. So go ahead and double click. Here it's saying crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Are we sure we want to open? Press open. So once this is open, we've got the option to install applications and games. So the first thing we're going to do is to download Steam. So click on the Steam icon here, we'll do a search for it. Then we're going to click on install Steam. It's going to download and install Steam into a brand new Windows 10 64 bit bottle. Here we're just going to say yes to installing these various fonts. A lot of the progress is going to happen in the background you don't have to click anything in particular. So now we're going to go through the Windows Steam setup. So just click next, select your language, select the default installation. Now we're going to allow this to run Steam. So this is downloading a 300 megabyte update. Just let that finish. So now we have the Steam login screen. We can log in with our username and password, or we can scan the QR code with the Steam app on a smartphone. So now we're logging in. And now we're in the Windows version of Steam. And if you want to progress any further, what I'd also advise you to do is to shut down Steam so that we can change some of the graphics settings within Crossover. Basically, we need to quit out of Steam, press exit here. So back within Crossover, we're going to click on our Steam bottle that we just created. And we have a few options here. So I do recommend turning on eSync. So I'm going to turn that on and reboot the bottle and enable eSync. And then we have two options here, which we can both run the game through. So D3D Metal, which uses game port toolkit. This translates DirectX 11 and 12 into Metal. Or we have the option here for DXVK, which translates DirectX 11 into Vulkan, and then Molten VK turns that into Metal. You should experiment with which one works best for you. I'm going to be testing out D3D Metal, as this tends to work a lot better with DirectX 11 and 12 games. So now that we're ready, we're going to go ahead and double click on Steam to open it. So once Steam is installed, we can go ahead and download Lethal Company. So we're going to be downloading the Windows version of this game. This is the only version that we can get at the moment. So once you have made a purchase, what we're going to do is to go to library and then we're going to type in lethal company and then we're going to go ahead and install. So just press the install button and then let this install into its default location, press install, and then it's going to download the game. So currently it's only 800 megabytes. So just let that finish. This is saying it's going to take a few minutes. So now the game has downloaded. We can press the play button here or go to library and then open this up from here. Just press the play button. It's just installing a dependency. And now you can see that the game is running. So on the top right hand corner, this is the D3D hub. This will help confirm whether this is actually running game porting toolkit. You'll see this if you have a version number here. That tells you what version of D3D Metal you're using. If you want to find out how to do this, then I'll leave a link to this video in the description, which will tell you the easy way to enable this HUD. Just make sure you type in that terminal command and relaunch crossover so that this becomes active. So now you can just go through the setup process. This will detect your microphone, which is really important in the game. You can see this moving as I'm talking, press confirm, and then you choose between online and LAN. And you can see that the online version is working. And then this is available to play now. So this is the latest version and there are not many settings to speak of. Make sure to use the frame rate cap of the monitor and that doesn't matter either. So none of these changes really make a big difference. Now the game is completely playable. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.